Good evening and welcome to the show. For the last seven years, Washington County has been host to the Maryland International Film Festival located here in Hagerstown, Maryland at the Maryland Theater and other venues. Uh, the event was held this weekend and from my perspective at least, it was a big success. But to tell us more about the event, we've invited Tom Reifert. Tom, welcome. Well, thank you very much for having me here on the flip side. This is exciting. So uh, we'll just go around the table and ask questions, but tell us about how this event got started. Well, back in 2010, uh, Tracy Hovey contacted me, and she had been um, a filmmaker, an award-winning documentary filmmaker, and she was also a journalist covering the national and international film festival circuit. And she wrote and, and uh, also had features on uh, video um, projects. And she said, uh, would you be interested in talking about a film festival? I said, you know what? It's funny, we have been talking about a film festival. There, there actually was a chamber committee that met for quite a while. And uh, we kind of didn't get a whole lot of traction because we didn't have anybody there that had ever run a film festival before. So Tracy and I met and uh, we thought that we could pull it together and we formed a committee. And uh, we got a great process now. And here it has been seven times uh, this year has been a great year for the film festival. Uh, it is a competitive showcase of independent films. Now some film festivals are not competitive. They just provide a showing of films. But ours is a competitive process. Uh, we have uh, films that are local films, documentary films, feature films, shorts, animations. Uh, also we have foreign films. So a lot of different categories that filmmakers from all around the world can submit their films. We also have a student film category that local Washington County students participate in and students from colleges and high schools all across the country. Uh, this year, we had over 400 films submitted from 23 countries. All of the judges in all of the different categories were able to select 106 films that we showed at the film festival this past weekend, and it really was exciting. We had four venues. Uh, the Maryland Theater, of course, was our anchor right. for, for all of the big films and the films that would have attracted a, a significant audience. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, the after parties, of course, and uh, the, the reception at the beginning, it, all of that was a lot of fun. But what's great to see, I met people from Boston, Louisiana, Florida, of course, a lot from California, uh, New York, I, I met people from Belarus, from France, from England, from Canada, in Hagerstown, Maryland. And they were all there to do one thing, and that was to enjoy the art of independent filmmaking. And what was great about it is that everybody networked and contacted each other and exchanged cards and that some people knew each other. It, it, it was a great thing. And I know that some of you were able to attend at least parts of the film festival, so you know what, what a fun experience it was. Yep. Rob? Explain a little what the difference is between the Maryland Film Fest and the Maryland International Film Fest, because sometimes they get confused. Well, I'm not sure who would be confused. Ours is the Maryland International Film Festival Hagerstown. So it's a much bigger name, and we're seven years old. And we are specifically a competitive showcase of independent films. The Maryland Film Festival is 20 years old, and that's in Baltimore. Um, that is a much larger film festival. It's not competitive, though. It's just a showcase. So films are selected. They're, they're not judged in a competitive manner. How'd you whittle your 400 films down to 106? Well, you got to have a great team of judges. I was going to say, that, and, that, uh, that's got to be a tough job. Oh, it's, it's, it's tough. Now, people hear this number and they go, oh my gosh, they, each judge had to watch 400 some odd films. Yeah. Well, no, we didn't do it that way. Uh, there were categories that, that judges would participate in and then we would, would get it a bunch of finalists you know, in the mix and then, and then they would select who the, the best one was through the scores uh, of the judging process. I never knew who was the winner until we handed out the trophies. It was pretty exciting. Oh, interesting. Uh, it was a lot of fun. And, and so this is a platform here in Hagerstown for independent filmmakers, producers, uh, also uh, for directors and crew and actors to be able to get together as a community. And uh, I met a lot of people, including an actor who is currently starring in a film that's being produced here locally. Well, and, and the other thing that I was going to suggest, and I, I've been involved, as, I guess, since the start in a very small way, 
but it, obviously you've, it's been going for, going for seven years. It's grown in terms of popularity, that's clear. But it's also grown in terms of the people that are attracted, um, f you know, some of the stars that are attracted. Can you speak a little bit about that? Well, that, that's, that's a true statement. We have, we have certainly grown in popularity, and it was named by Movie Maker Magazine a top 50 film <coughs> festival worth the entry fee. Wow. So Ooh. to independent filmmakers, that's important. Now, there, there are hundreds of film festivals in big towns, little towns. You know, you go from Sundance and Cannes and Austin and everywhere else, and then you have small film festivals. Uh, you know, Canandaigua, New York, and you name it, the little, little tiny towns that have film festivals. And, and the great thing about it, to be named a top 50 uh, in the United States, puts, puts us in pretty good company. And filmmakers understand that. We saw a huge bump in the number of quality films that were submitted this year for our film festival. In the first few years, uh, we had, you know, over 40 films. Well, to have 106 films is a, is a big deal. And, and Ron, the Maryland Film Festival this year is only showing 40 films. And, wow. and, and, and those are great films, don't get me wrong. They do a wonderful job. They average over 12,000 attendees every year. Uh, they own their own theater. Uh, the Parkland. Yeah, it, it, it's it's really a remarkable film festival. Jed Dietz is a friend of mine. He's from upstate New York. His his mom, when she passed, the New York Times said this was the last great granddaughter of U.S. Grant, President Grant. So the guy that runs the film festival in Baltimore, they have over 300 volunteers. That is a huge film festival. Hey, maybe Hagerstown will get to be that big. But right now we got a great following. The independent filmmakers love us. We did have some great stars this year. Um, first of all, um, uh, we give out a couple of big awards and one is called the Mendez Award. That's kind of our highest award. That is an award that recognizes excellence in filmmaking, um, uh, a real um, a process, a body of work of being able to achieve in that art of filmmaking and uh, to be able to contribute and give back. So it's community service and other things. The winner this year uh, was Amir Arison, who was the big star of NBC TV's The Blacklist. Mm -hmm. okay. And a uh, big deal actor. Yes, And absolutely. a lot of films and that kind of thing. And actually, a couple years ago, <clears throat> we didn't know who this guy was, and he had a film in our film festival. And it was a great little short film. And people are going, that guy looks familiar. And, and I go over, introduce myself, and it's Amir Arison, and I realize, oh my gosh. And, and he had submitted a film this year, uh, 20 weeks, and uh, he was an actor in it. It actually won Best Feature, it was a great film. The, uh, the thing of it is, is that his work that he does for nonprofits, just terrific, um, uh, for rescue animals and shelters, uh, for mental health issues, um, giving back to the nonprofit world and, and helping um, arts in our communities. So in recognition of all that, he was awarded this year the Mendez Award. And Toby Mendez was there on behalf of the family to present the award. Wow. Also this year, the most senior female on the production side in Hollywood was awarded the Nora Roberts Foundation Award. And that's Shelley Strong. She is the, the Vice President of Production for Amblin Partners, DreamWorks mm -hmm. Studios. She reports directly to Steven Spielberg. Uh, Ron knows her and knows the family. It's a, she's actually from Smithsburg. And uh, she's made hundreds of films, or been involved with lots and lots of films. And she was awarded the Nora Roberts Award. And what was neat about that is she showed a clip right. of some of the big films that she's been involved with, and one that hasn't even been released and nobody's seen the trailer yet. The trailer was premiered that night. Wow. Um, it, was, it was neat to talk to her and, and, and have the opportunity to, to, to chat about her success from Hagerstown. Now, the Nora Roberts Award is about a local person who has gone on and done great things in, in, in Hollywood. Um, we have awarded many uh, people, including Ed Sanchez, a Marylander. Mm -hmm. He's the famous director that did the Blair Witch Project. Mm -hmm. uh, we've also given the award to Scott Gardenauer, also of Smithsburg, by the way, big time executive producer. He did Pearl Harbor and a lot of other right. great films. So these are the kinds of people that we have coming. We had Ann Mahoney this year, Carrie Cahill. Uh, they're both big stars on TV's The Walking Dead. They taught acting classes in the Black Box Theater at HCC on Thursday night, and then they were there uh, during the film festival on Saturday. Carrie was the moderator for that. Um, um, that discussion, we had a community police officer from Montgomery County, we had a guy from the NFL, 
talking about that whole thing, Black Lives Matter and right. how, how, how the players were taking a knee and all that. It was a very interesting discussion. We had just shown three documentaries about it and uh, then, then we had about a half hour discussion. Um, we had Hagerstown Police there, representatives also from the County Sheriff's Department. So it was, it was a neat, uh, neat process. Uh, a question, where we're at right now, we're in top 50, what, what, what can we do to try to make, get to the top 25? <laughs> uh, well, in my opinion, we're in the top, top 10. How okay, well, I... I uh, first of all, it's, uh, to, have, to have a project like this in Hagerstown requires a lot of very dedicated people. Nobody gets paid. Uh, yes, we, we, we rent the Maryland Theater. Yes, we rent the other venues. Uh, we, we, we have to rent projectors and screens and that kind of thing, and, and, and there's parties and whatnot that, uh, um, of course, it's a cash bar, so it's not like we spend a lot of money on the parties, but, but there's a lot of costs. And um, to really get up to be a big deal film festival where, where you have all of the big stars are going there, it's going to take years of work. And, and even the Maryland Film Festival, they don't attract uh, huge, huge stars all the time. You'll get a few. Because uh, Baltimore, the home of Barry Levinson, John Waters, a lot of other great uh, right. people on the production side, they have, uh, they have some significant filmmakers down there. Yeah, they do. So from a economic perspective, I mean, this is an event that brings people into Hagerstown. Can you talk about, put on your economic development hat for just a minute and talk about what you see the benefits to our, to our local town? Well, tourism. Uh, which is a function of economic development in that it uh, uh, creates opportunities for citizens by providing jobs and, and bringing investment into a community. Uh, a film festival or any event that brings people from out of town is a great tourism thing. This is a very typical example of a retail tourism event, meaning that we didn't have to uh, get way down in a group rate to get these people to come here. Okay, it's, it's a great event. Uh, we had over 100 filmmakers from far and wide uh, coming for at least three days, many of them more. Um, and interestingly, the Maryland Film Festival um, is, is opening now this week in Baltimore. So some of these filmmakers stayed longer to see around here and then they headed down to Baltimore for, for the Maryland Film Festival. Um, it has been estimated that the film festival locally has an economic impact of over ten thousand dollars. Wow! During the you know four day and that, and that's and that's assuming that nobody ever comes back, which we know they do. Well, yes, exactly right. Um, that is the time that they are here: uh, hotel rooms, food, the transportation costs. There's a retail component. Um, that's all good to be able to have an event here uh, that creates economic impact is important. Very similar to when you have a, a group of 25 or 30 softball teams in town playing a softball mm -hmm. tournament. You know, those numbers of kids or, or adults are staying in hotels and they're spending money locally. But the, with a group like that, they normally put a little pressure to lower the cost for the hotels. Exactly right. Versus this, this is more independent. Right, we, we know they're coming because of the, um, uh, if there is selection in the film festival, they contact us to let us know that they're coming, right. how, many, how many of the passes that they need, you know, that kind of thing. So we get a pretty good count. And, and they stay all over. Now we recommend a few hotels um, that we ask the hotels to be kind of our out of town guests. Um, we do, as a film festival, put up some of the big stars. I'll admit that up front. Um, Amir Arison, you know, that traveled down from New York, even though he bought his own train ticket, we did put him up uh, in, a, in a local hotel. Yeah, reasonable. You, you would do that. Yeah, absolutely. For a big star. So, mm -hmm. But there is, there is terrific economic impact. I have had uh, some people say that I'm quite low on my estimate of what the economic impact of the film festival is because I'm not including in that number, that's only direct spending. I'm not including in the number, what does the uh, publicity of the film festival create for Hagerstown around you know, the region? Uh, all of those newspaper articles and all that kind of right. stuff has a, has a great value. Tom, uh, I want to follow up. Goodwill was a sponsor of one section. It started at 640 in the Grand Piano Ballroom on Saturday night. And there was five or six films. And one of those films was For Once in My Life which is about a Goodwill band in Miami, Florida, and what all they did. But the point was, 
All of the films that were shown, most of their staffs were there that evening. And at the end, John McCain from Goodwill got up and got them all to stand up and they talked and we could ask them questions. The unique way that they talked to everybody was something I wished every person listening tonight and all over could listen to as to what the Film Fest does for so many diff different ethnic backgrounds, handicapped people, all types of people. This is just not something for one phase of society. Films include everybody. Correct. And how in that movie, you know, Duran, uh, you know, the story of Duran and Odyssey and some of them, it was just fantastic. I'm glad you, you brought that up. Uh, that, that film, for once in my life, uh, was a great project. And um, it, was, it was neat to be able to show it in our film festival. Talk about overcoming and persevering and uh, to be able to, to, to make a quality life. And I'm so pleased that Goodwill, once again, not just this year, but once again, participated in helping bring the film festival to Hagerstown and Washington County. And each of those blocks yes. that we have at all of the different venues, um, a moderator gets up. And, 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 and introduces the, the director, the producer, the actors, who's there from the film, uh, asks several questions, you know, where did you film it, all kinds of things, and then take questions from the audience. That process is very important to be able to have an immediacy with the audience that's mm -hmm. watching the films. When do you get to do that? When you're in a regular old movie theater watching a film, yeah. or when you're watching right. a TV show. What's neat about it for me, Ron, is I got to ask, why did you choose that ending for such and such film, you know, in one of the other blocks at the other theaters? And, and the guy admitted it was the best way that we could end it and still have people guessing what was going on. And there was another film. Nobody got the film until the very end while the credits were rolling. It was a surprise yeah. ending. And, and uh, you know, we frequently ask questions about how much did the film cost. You know, I asked these independent filmmakers, and one film cost only $3,000 to film. And he came all the way from Los Angeles for that film. Yeah. Wow. And, and another film uh, that was a short film, a local filmmaker, it was only a three minute film, uh, cost about maybe 20 bucks to film. And then another film cost $500,000. So it was a big range. Um, the filmmaker from The Muse, uh, which just got picked up for distribution, he said his film cost half a million dollars. Wow. And it was a great film. We had three films, by the way, that got picked up for distribution. Um, after they were officially selected for our film festival, which is pretty neat. That is very neat. Because that means that, that right. you could see it maybe on Netflix or yeah. something and like that. And it shows that your judges have good taste too, right? Exactly yeah. right. <laughs> and, and hopefully with Shelley Strong and her connections with Spielberg and what she does and with Amir, I mean, some of the people that went to see Amir couldn't, couldn't get enough of Amir uh, in the blacklist. Yeah. But hopefully they parlay into things that make I, I think we're, we're better just in the top 50, as, as you, as you well, think. It, like you but said. how are you going to parlay when we the had good the, parts when we had Scott uh, When we had Scott Gardenauer here t uh, two years ago, yes. that ended up the next year we got a great film that we, we wouldn't have gotten otherwise. So there, there is some benefit. And, and when people see, oh, they had so-and-so here, they had so-and-so. We had Joe Carnahan here in our first year. He showed the A-team. And he brought Rampage Jackson, who played the Mr. T character, you know, the, the, the yeah. whatever his name was. And, uh, you know, a lot of stars from the film. That was great. That begat him becoming our creative director of the film festival, a, a, an A-list Hollywood director. Loved it so much. He said, how can I be involved permanently? That's great. And, yeah. and uh, Shelley Strong met, met uh, with uh, Tracy this week one-on-one -on -one over lunch and exploring ways that there can be, you know, it's not just you're here and gone, but how can this be better for us in the future? My hope is that the Maryland Theater, especially with the big expansion that's happening, gets filled up on opening night and, and some of those other times when some unknown films are being seen. Wouldn't that be great? 1,300 plus seats and every seat is taken. But the other hope I have is that we get hundreds of filmmakers every year that know that this is the best place to go for independent film networking. So interestingly, and I'll, I'll bring my part in, and, and I'm one of those vendors that you rent equipment from. Full uh, disclosure. Uh, full thank disclosure you. thing. But uh, well, so you're one the of the only guy in town. To one do of that, the things yeah. that I did was I actually 
ran through to make sure that nothing would, would not work. Oh, yeah. On yeah. So I had him sitting on my desk and running as I was working on different things. And I got to tell you, some of the films were just absolutely riveting. Oh, unbelievable quality. It, it really was amazing. And, and I would find myself getting pulled in and just, you know, uh, going to watch this the whole way right. through. Of course, I didn't have time to watch 106 films, but um, they really were riveting. Some I'm going to take the film. last word on that. Tom, thank you for being here. Thank you for your efforts. Thank Tracy for her efforts and all of the people that are involved in the Maryland International all Film Festival. All volunteers, and we love doing it. I think we have a lot bigger and better things to come. Even though it's a huge success today, I'm sure it'll be even bigger and better next year. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Thank Stay you, tuned Ron. when Thank we you, come Ron. back. Uh, the polls are in, and Governor Hogan is going to be a hard guy to beat, at least at this point. Stay tuned. We're back in three minutes.